Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It's Tuesday, July 13th. Uh, I'm sure some of you have heard. Um, we are no longer going to be meeting at, uh, at the branch. Uh, starting this Sunday, we will go back to mornings at 10 o'clock and we're going to meet in my house until we can find another place to, uh, to another building to meet at. Uh, hopefully God will open the doors for us, but I'm excited about meeting at my house and and we can do some creative things that I'm my brain keeps going. So I'm excited about it. I hope those of you that belong to Collision are just as excited as I am. Good morning, Serena. Good morning, John. <clears throat> Let's get into God's Word. We're at the end of the chapter now. We're going to finish the book of Matthew today. Uh, <clears throat> this is where Jesus is rose from the dead. And he's getting ready now to leave earth. And he gives us his final words here. It says, Then Jesus came to his disciples and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been grant given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus' final words before he left earth, never to be seen again, to return to heaven until the end of the world when he comes back again to get us. So what did he say? Because it had to be the most important things that he could think of. I mean, these are his final words to his disciples. It had to have been some of the most important things that he's ever told them. So what did he tell them? Well, he told them that he had all authority. That he was he had authority on earth and he had authority in heaven. Good morning, Lily. He told told his disciples to go make disciples, to make followers of Jesus. And he told them to make these disciples from all nations. And he told them to baptize them. And he told them to teach them everything that Jesus taught him them. And then he gave his promise that he would be with them until the very end of the age when he returns again. So, I guess the question is, uh, are we doing what he commanded us to do? He, he, he says, I can, these are the things that I command you to do, he says. Everything I have commanded you, a command is not, if you want to, it's, it's you, you do this. Jesus is saying, do this now, do these things. Do these things, make disciples, make followers of, of Jesus. To make them from every nation, every nationality, baptize them, teach them everything that that we've been taught. This is what my desire is for for my days left on earth. Good morning, Grace. This, this is my desire. Good morning, Christina. The, the, Melda, good morning. The, this is my desire. I, I want to do those things. I wanna I wanna teach I, I wanna teach you people everything that people have taught me. I want to, I want to make disciples, followers of Jesus. I want to be able to baptize them, things that I want to do. But I guess the question, bigger question, is, if you knew you were leaving this earth, if you knew we're at the end of the, your life, uh, what would you tell those that you cared about, especially your your children and your grandchildren, if you knew that you weren't going to see them again? Morning, Ryan. If you knew they weren't going to see them again, like my brother right now is in his final days. And his, his girls come over to visit him every week. And his grandkids come over on a regular basis. If that were me in the, sitting in that chair, my friend, what, what I want to tell my children and my grandchildren, that this is the things that come to my mind. I would certainly tell them how important it is to do whatever is necessary to grow in their faith. Do the things that is necessary for you to continue growing in your faith, to become strong disciples, become strong followers of Jesus. I, I would tell them how, how being involved in a church has helped me all my life to achieve that. I'm not, I'm not saying you have to go to church. I'm just saying that for me, that's what worked for me. I would tell them how important it is to use the gifts that God gave us. God gave us these special, special spiritual gifts to help him to build his kingdom. And he's going to hold us accountable for not using them. So I would tell them that's why I spent my life teaching youth and adults, children. I, I, I want to use the gifts that God gave me 
That's why I continue to do these, these daily devotions. I would tell them how much I love them and how much I hope that I would be able to spend eternal life with them. Those are some of the things I would tell them. Third John, he says this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That's what I would have no greater joy than knowing that my, when I leave this earth, of knowing that my children are walking with the Lord. I would have no greater joy than to know that my grandchildren are walking with the Lord. And if God blesses me with great-grandchildren, then the same thing for them. I hear many Christians tell their children in the, on their deathbed how important it is to get a good education so you can have a good job or a good career. And those are important. I'm not saying that, but, but what does God say? What good does it do to gain the whole world but forfeit your soul? So if I were on my deathbed and I have children that were as rich as Elon Musk or, or Bill Gates, well, would I be proud of that? that yes, but, but that wouldn't be near as important to me as whether they were walking with the Lord, whether they were growing in their faith, whether they had a desire to grow in their faith. That's why I commend each of you that are watching the Ryan, that, that you have this strong a desire to grow in your faith. That's going to rub off on your children. That that can't not rub off on your wife and your children. You're the spiritual leader in your household, and you're doing that. What's necessary, grace. You 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 can't be growing in your faith like this and not rub off on your children. And I've seen it. I've seen your boys. I seen it yesterday when they helped move the stuff back to my house. I, I seen how their faith is growing. It's nothing more important than that. Nothing more important than that. Imelda, I see you watching this. I want to, I don't know if my Monty's watching with you, but I pray for Monty every single morning. I pray for that man. You guys were special to us at, at Clejan. It's extremely special to us. So so it gives me joy to see that you're watching these videos, that you that you're continuing to grow in your faith. John, you've been so loyal, so loyal to Clejan, so very, very loyal to Clejan. Uh, you're the one person that we can count on being there every Sunday. You, you people are growing in your faith. One Sunday, you people are growing in your faith and you have a desire. Let that rub off on your children and on your grandchildren. There's nothing more important you can, you can do for your children than to help them to grow in their faith. The same thing with your grandchildren, to help them to grow in your, their faith. Nothing is more important than that. That's why Jesus, I'm going to repeat him again, the things that Jesus told his disciples before he left this earth, the most important things that Jesus could think of. And he told them that he has authority over all heaven and earth. He says that, that he tells us to go and make disciples, followers of Jesus. He tells them, make them from all different nationalities and nations. Baptize them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teach them everything that I have taught, that I have taught you. And his promise is to be with us until he comes back again at the end of the world. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. I started this off with letting you know that uh, Collision will no longer be meeting at at, imp, at, uh, at the branch church. This Sunday, we're gonna go back to meeting in my house. We're gonna go, go back the first time meeting at my house at 10 a.m. We're going to meet in our front patio. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about that. We can do some creative things now. My juices, my creative juices have been stirring. I, I haven't slept the last two nights just thinking about ideas uh, that we can do. Um, so we're going to start meeting at 10 o'clock at, at my house starting this week. Tonight and tomorrow night, we will still meet at the branch with the youth groups. And then the following week, we, they will meet also at my house. So we will use the backyard for the children. Uh, if there's any babies that come, we'll use our toy room in our house for, for, the, for the nursery. Uh, we will make it work, okay, until God opens a door for us where we can meet in the mornings. Because it was obvious to us that mornings work way better. Uh, and so uh, we're going to try to find a church or a building somewhere that, that has affordable rent that we can afford. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll meet at my house, and who knows, 
Who knows what? I will keep ministering to whoever shows up. Whoever shows up, there's an, I, will, I will teach you everything that I've been taught. And we'll be creative and we'll grow in our faith. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day. I'll uh, see you tomorrow morning again at 8 o'clock. Bye.